In this lesson, you will learn how to find the x-intercepts and y-intercept of a parabola given a quadratic function in standard form. The x-intercepts are the points on the parabola where y equals 0. So, we set y to 0 and solve for x. Let's use the factoring method. We need to find two numbers that multiply to give negative 10 and add up to 3. We know that 2 times 5 equals 10, right? But if we make 2 negative, they multiply to negative 10 and also add up to 3, right? So, negative 2 and 5 are the two numbers we are looking for. Therefore, when we factor this quadratic equation, it becomes x minus 2 times x plus 5. Next, set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. Solving the first equation, we find that x equals 2. Solving the second equation, we find that x equals negative 5. Therefore, the x-intercepts of the parabola are the points negative 5, 0 and 2, 0. If you plot the graph of this quadratic function, you will notice that the parabola intersects the x-axis at these points. Notice that since the parabola has two x-intercepts, it crosses the x-axis twice. Now, let's find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the point on the parabola where x equals 0. So, we set x to 0 and solve for y. This simplifies to negative 10, right? Therefore, the y-intercept of the parabola is the point 0, negative 10. It crosses the y-axis at this point. Notice that in this example, the parabola has two x-intercepts, but this is not always the case. In the next two examples, you will see parabolas with only one x-intercept and no x-intercept at all. Remember, the x-intercept occurs when y equals 0. Set y to 0 and solve for x. Because the leading coefficient is not 1, we can use either the AC method or the quadratic formula. You can always use the quadratic formula if you find factoring difficult. But let's use the AC method for this example, and we will use the quadratic formula for the next one. First, multiply 9 and 4, which equals 36, right? Then, find two numbers that multiply to give 36 and add up to 12. We know that 6 times 6 equals 36, right? When we add them, we get 12, right? So, these are the two numbers we are looking for. Next, split the middle term using these numbers. We can rewrite 12x as 6x plus 6x, right? The other terms in the equation stay the same. Next, factor this by grouping. Group the first two terms together and the last two terms together, then factor out the greatest common factor from each group. In the first group, the GCF of 9x squared and 6x is 3x, right? To find what goes in the parentheses, divide each term in the group by 3x. 9x squared divided by 3x is 3x, right? 6x divided by 3x is 2. In the second group, the GCF of 6x and 4 is 2, right? Divide each term in the group by 2 to find what goes in the parentheses. 6x divided by 2 is 3x. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Next, factor out the common factor for both groups, which is 3x plus 2. This leaves behind 3x plus 2 as the other factor. Notice that the two factors are the same, which is the same as 3x plus 2 squared, right? Now, setting 3x plus 2 equal to 0 and solving for x, we find that x equals negative 2 thirds. Therefore, the x-intercept of the parabola is the point negative 2 thirds, 0. If you plot the graph of this quadratic function, you will notice that the parabola touches the x-axis at this point. Notice that since the parabola has one x-intercept, it touches the x-axis only once. By the way, if you want to learn how to graph a quadratic function step by step, please check the link in the description after you finish watching this video. Now, let's find the y-intercept. Remember, the y-intercept occurs when x equals 0. Set x to 0 and solve for y. This simplifies to 4, right? Therefore, the y-intercept of the parabola is the point 0, 4. It crosses the y-axis at this point. By the way, the y-intercept always equals the constant term. Now, let's see our last example where the parabola has no x-intercept. How do you know if a parabola has no x-intercept? Let's use the quadratic formula. First, identify the values of the coefficients. A is negative 1. B is 5. 
C is negative 7. Then, substitute the values of A, B, and C into the quadratic formula. Now simplify this. In the numerator, inside the square root, 5 squared is 25. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and negative 4 times negative 7 is 28, right? In the denominator, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 25 minus 28 is negative 3, right? Notice that the number inside the square root, which is the discriminant, is negative. This indicates that there are no real solutions. If there are no real solutions, the parabola does not have an x-intercept. If you plot the graph of this quadratic function, you will notice that the parabola does not cross the x-axis. By the way, to determine whether the parabola has an x-intercept or not, you just need to find the discriminant. Let's find the y-intercept first, and we will discuss that. Set x to 0 and solve for y. This simplifies to negative 7. Therefore, the y-intercept of the parabola is the point 0, negative 7. Now, let's briefly discuss the relationship between the discriminant, the solutions, and the x-intercepts. In general, if the discriminant of a quadratic is greater than 0, the quadratic has two real solutions, which means the parabola has two x-intercepts. It crosses the x-axis twice. If the discriminant is equal to 0, the quadratic has one real solution, which means the parabola has only one x-intercept. It touches the x-axis only once. If the discriminant is less than 0, the quadratic has no real solution, which means the parabola has no x-intercept. It does not cross the x-axis. A parabola has only one y-intercept, and that is always the constant term. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing.